Hello guys, welcome back to my channel. A few weeks ago, I got my Shipac 3000 VS knife sharpener. And I did a quick video on how, on the unboxing. I had quite a dose of flu, so I haven't been able to do anything since then. Today I'm going to start back in my workshop because outside we have got Storm Una starting and it's howling like mad. So nice, nice and quiet in, in the house here, so we should be fine. I've got some knives I want to do. So this, this is going to be like the first in a, in a series of, of sharpening. So today I'm going to start doing some knives and I, I'm still learning about this, this machine as well. So I have been playing with it. So I seem to be getting, getting hang of it. So we, we've got to, got to get on and, and start sharpening some knives and just go, go through, through how, how, how it all works. Here's my machine. It's all ready to go. I filled the water bath up. I've got some magnets on the side. What I've done, I've glued on a back plate and then the magnet goes on there. Hopefully that will catch the iron filings from the inside. I've got one on either side. This leather stropping mill. I put some oil on it originally and I've been using it with some stropping paste that came with the machine and that's all ready to go and then I've got a few knives yes I have a problem I love my knives I do run a bit of a meat business at home so I do use a lot of the bigger knives for for, for cutting cutting steaks and whatnot and turning those into South African built on so I also have the set of Japanese knives which I will do as a separate video with the unit came this angle finder it's fine but I've got another one which is adjustable this one here you can do all sorts of different angles just by undoing the, the little knob knurled knob there and changing the pointer and I find it it's going to be a lot better I've also got the stone grader which is double-sided, one side fine and one side is coarse, for converting the stone into 220 grit or 1000 grit, just by rubbing it across. I'll show you that later on. I've also got just another arbitrary one, which I've been trying, and it seems to work just as well, so for, for making it very fine. Then for the knives, we'll be using this knife jig, holding jig. This can do up to about 14 inches of knife. If it's a filleting knife or what we would call a, a ham knife or salmon knife, which is very bendy, or a filleting knife, as I say, just for bendy, then we're using the wider jig just to hold it, hold it better. Okay, so there I've got just a selection. I, I've still got a few more as well. I'm gonna do some work on these two big knives can see they've been butchered like mad before I got them and they've got this little heel there this knife started off going right from the bottom but obviously they've been using a grinder or a belt sand or something to to do it in the butchery so it's ground down lot so I, I need to take it back now take his heel off and take it back to the to the black so I'll do that quickly and then we'll carry on those this this knife I I bought it years ago and within a couple of weeks it broke so I got it replaced and over the years it sort of cracked a small the bake light has cracked out so the other day I got some putty mix it up and put it on I knew it would be a different color but I thought oh, I'll, I'll I'll have a zebra knife this is another knife of mine that's the tip broke off or the end broke off on this one so I just rounded it and it works well yeah quite 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 pleased with that one I've got a very small thin one as a boning knife you can see there's been butchered again I'm not too worried about that though I won't I won't grind it down to get that out and yeah okay so that's what we're going to get on with we're not going to go through through them all on the video but we'll 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 get some of them done 
so we will start with my my zebra knife that I fixed so you get your your small knife jig and you put it in just a, just a few millimeters and you screw up the bottom screw and then you tighten with the top one you want that line there basically parallel with sort of from there from the bottom edge of the knife to the tip you don't want it in line with the top so you want it sort of parallel with that line sort of like that there so I would say that's about it there and you tighten it up next we've got to set the angle now this is a general purpose kitchen knife so it can go anywhere from 15 to 22 degrees that's one side so it's if it's 15 there it means it's 30 degree angle and it can go right up to about 20 degrees 22 degrees to make it between 30 and 40 40 degrees I like to sort of do them at about 15 degrees that's what I've always had my knives done to originally so now we've got to set up the angle so we would put the small knife the jig on there and then we now come with our angle bracket our angle finder and come and get that done on there I have this little chart that I made up I found some drawings on the internet and I put a whole lot of writing to it just to suit me so I will put a copy of that on that you could have a look at as well. Earlier on I was saying that we sort of do these kitchen knives to about 15 degrees. That's only these pairing knives. The pairing and the, the everyday sort of knives like that. The smaller knives we will do to 15 degrees. The bigger knives, the bigger kitchen knives we'll do those to 20. Right, so the angle finder that comes with the machine you can't do a 15 degree angle. You can do a 20 or a 25 or 30 or 35, but you can't do a 15. So I bought one of these ones, which they all over the place on eBay and Amazon and all over like that. First of all, you set the diameter of the, of the stone. So in my case, it's just below 250 mil. So we can put that arrow just below 250 and then I want 15 degrees so now I will put this against the stone and against the knife and we'll work it out then you you've set your angle finder you come up here you put your angle finder against the knife and you can actually see light through there so I don't know if you can see it on there but it's not quite the right angle. So now I need to lift up the holder, which will then decrease, sorry, increase that angle. It's got a, an adjustment nut on there. So it's nice and easy for fine adjustments. Oh, I went the wrong way. Right, we've adjusted a bit there. That is almost perfect. Right, that is fine now. So just tie, tighten it all up, double check. Yep, that's perfect. Right, so I'm now ready to start grinding it. We switch on. We get our stone grader because these knives are fairly sharp. They don't need it rough. And we put our stone grader on. And it's on a very, very smooth one. And you do that a few times. Now you can feel it. You can actually hear the difference as well. You can feel it. It's very, very, very smooth. Everything's tight. So you basically just start at one end, go to the end, and that. Now when you when you're getting to, to the to the tip, 
you don't do this to try and round the tip or that like that you lift up as you draw into the end you lift up you go down lift up and then go down again you don't want to have the tip of the knife going over about halfway along the, st the thickness of the stone as well right so let's you can see a little bit of water coming up there that's perfect put quite a bit of pressure Right, so we go all along, and then we lift up, go down, lift up, and go down. Now something I didn't do originally, which I should have done, but you don't have to do it every time, is if you want to see where it's cutting, where it's grinding, you put a bit of marker along it so you put a bit of marker along each face like that and then you can see where it's grinding so let's just see where this one's grinding so you can see I'm not turning it that's flat, so you don't don't want to try and turn it. You just lift up. Okay, so let's do that again. You can see where it is grinding. That's got blue on, this hasn't. So we just keep going, we do a few times each side. Right, time to do the other side. See there how I lift up and then come down. Lift up and come down. Some people stand from that side of the machine and work this way. I, I, I can't because of my circumstances, so I have to stand this side and it works for me. Right, so now we can see it's not getting much of a sharpness yet and there's no burr. So we've got to keep going. I can feel a little burr now. You just run your finger up, a little burr that side. I'm just going to do it a couple more times, just with the weight of the knife, basically. It's hardly pressing on, on, on at all, just to sort of finish it off. So, take it out of here, and now we can do it on the strop, on the leather strop. Something about when you're placing your knife in there, you don't want to go too deep, because, as you can see, I've ground some of this off the other day by mistake because I had the knife in too deep so you only need it in three or four millimeters so with stropping because the rotation is that way like up there you don't want to do the knife this way where it'll just cut straight into the leather you have always got to do it this way so it's but it's going with the the direction like that so it's that way or that way never towards you like that right so before we switch on I've put a little bit more tape uh, paste on there now that paste has got like a 6,000 grit inside it so it's it's polishing and um, just to get the final sort of sharpen and to take off the burr 
which we have on the knife. So let's go switch on. You can set up your your guide going this side on, on the machine and then re reset your jig to put it on the jig. It's easy just to do it by hand as well. So you put quite a bit of pressure on it. You can see it in the video there. Trying to keep my fingers out of the way so we can see what's going on. backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards and it takes a burr off and polishes it at the same time getting it really really nice and sharp there's a few ways to tell if it's sharp one of them is by cutting new, some paper with it and other ways is checking it on your nail I prefer the, the paper method because then it's it's quite nice and satisfying so you can cut through something. Right, so let's clean that off. Just checking to see if there's any burr left there. No, and it's, it's feeling very really sharp. So for checking, I've got a, an old book from one of the tool companies and it just should just sort of slice through nice and easily no pressure just going through there like that that's nice you can also use A4 paper so that is one very nice sharp knife Mr. Zebra. Right, my big 10 inch Victorian Ox knife. The one I've ground the, made that a bit better. I've, I've sort of ground a bit of an angle to it. Now, because it's going to be, uh, I need to rough that, rough the stone up to take some of the, 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 the meat off the knife. So I'm, I'm going to do it with the rough side, which will then convert this. We'll convert that back to quite a rough 220 grit. Yeah, you can actually, gee, you can really feel the difference now. Okay, so this part of the knife is good. Bottom part is what needs work on. So let's just see. And my angle's perfect. Mainly the bottom piece that I'm trying to get done. If I can't get it all done today <clears throat> on this sharpening, over the next few sharpenings it will come come down. Right. You can see there's a little bit of blue marker left at the bottom there. 
that means quite a bit of grinding to get it out so I'm not going to bother too much I don't use that for cutting anyway and then this side a tiny little bit left there I'll do the stone back back to a, a fine stone I just give it a few runs over the whole lot It doesn't take much of the stone at all and it's 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 a very good idea to do to, to keep doing it just to just to keep dressing the stone right so let's just do it on the fine one for a few runs long life you've really got to be careful that you don't hit your hand on the be careful you don't hit your hand on the leather strop wheel as well a couple more times and it'll be fine so let's get the stropping this one Put the speed up a bit, especially being a big knife, it needs a lot of stopping. Right, so that feels nice now. Feels nice and sharp. Get a piece of paper and do a paper test. Ha ha! That's good. So that nice big 10 inch steak knife can cut paper like that as well. So it's gonna slice through the meat like butter. Earlier on, I said there's a few ways of testing for how sharp the knife is. Another way is just to put it, the knife on your thumb. And if it stays there, it's sharp. And if it slides off, it's not sharp. You just put it on your thumbnail. And it's staying there perfectly. Let's get one of these other ones that I know is blunt. And it just slides off, you see. You know, this one, you put it on and it just stays. Mm. Okay, so that's another way to test it for shop. There's a few ways that you can keep the edge nice and sharp. As you see in butcheries, as soon as they want to start cutting, they always get out a, a knife hone, a, a, a sharpening steel. It's not actually a sharpening steel, it's a hone, it's a honing steel. And just a few, a few strokes up and down like that is enough to, to keep that blade nice and sharp for a long time if it starts going down in in condition you can use a ceramic hone sharpening steel I suppose you could still call it a bit of a sharpening steel because it does a little bit more than a than a than a hone does so you can do it on that it's a lot more aggressive so few backwards and forwards like that. On a very dull knife, you also get the sharpening steel. This is now a sharpening steel. It's not a hone, it's a sharpening steel. And it's diamond. It's got tiny diamonds impregnated, industrial diamonds. That's quite coarse. You, you can really feel it. When I rub my nail up and down there, you can feel here how rough that is. It can recondition a knife back to being fairly sharp. Once you've done it with that, you still need to do it probably then with the uh, ceramic hone and then the, just a normal 
steel, steel home. So you can, you, you can do any knives with this. I've got a couple of these big chef, big chef knives, these, these, these chopper, chopper sort of knives, which we will set up and do, do as, as, as one of the videos in the future. We can do scissors, we can do axes, we can do woodworking tools. I've got a few uh, tools here as well to be done, um, chisels. You can do plain blades. I've got a, got a hand plane here somewhere, which we'll do that blade as well. So, you know, there's such a lot of stuff you can do with this. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. Please like and subscribe to the channel. And we'll see you in the next one. Thank you.